Hi, I'm Jeff Walters, and welcome to The Minutes. And thanks for listening today. It's great to have you along on The Minutes for the week of March the 11th, 2024. This is a City of Thunder Bay podcast. The Minutes takes a look at what happened at Thunder Bay City Council this past week. On this episode, we'll have a rundown of what happened at this week's City Council meeting and an interview with Summer Stevenson, the project manager for the Housing Accelerator. This is a new position and a new challenge for Stevenson. We'll hear from her in just a few minutes. But first, Council started off with the State of the City address from Mayor Ken Boschkoff. In the 20-minute speech, which was titled All Roads Lead to Thunder Bay, Boschkoff addressed many issues. The idea is that people come to Thunder Bay for work, for the mining industry and leisure, Boschkoff said how the city needs to capitalize on this for future growth. He also spoke about being an inclusive city, which includes fostering relationships with the Indigenous community and embracing diversity. The address also included references to how the city is working on creating more housing, economic successes at the port, as well as bringing more cruise ships to Thunder Bay. Council approved a new software agreement worth over $625,000 a year. The three-year contract with Soft Choice Canada Incorporated is new. It replaces a previous one-year renewal for Microsoft software, which is used by city staff. Administration says renewing for a three-year term should provide some savings, as software costs typically increase from 0 to 6% a year. The report to Council also says there is a 7% discount for entering into the longer contract, which works out to almost $120,000 over three years. Council approved a number of bylaw changes and procedural changes to establish the Housing Accelerator Fund last night. The changes include allowing the General Manager of Infrastructure Development and Operations to purchase or sell land with a value of up to $200,000 when using the Housing Accelerator Fund or Land Development Fund. Some other changes were made to two other bylaws dealing with planning agreements and the Condominium Act. These changes had to deal with procedures, signing authority, and delegating authority. The changes stem from the city receiving nearly $20 million from the federal government's Housing Accelerator Fund. We'll hear more about the fund and the city's plans to move ho- to move housing forward in just a couple of minutes. And that's a wrap as to what happened at Council this week. For more information on anything that happens at Council, please visit our website, thunderbay.ca slash council. There's a lot of talk about housing in Thunder Bay. It all started in the fall with the province announcing housing targets for municipalities across Ontario, and that chatter continued through last week with the federal government announcing more than $20 million in funding through the Housing Accelerator Fund. Summer Stevenson can explain how all this relates to building more homes in Thunder Bay. She's the project manager of the Housing Accelerator. Summer, thanks for joining me in the Minute Studio. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in today. So $20 million, that's a lot of money announced for Thunder Bay. How does that money kind of translate into housing? So this money will translate into housing in two different ways. Um, In our approved action plan, we laid out eight different initiatives to to roll out this funding. Some of these initiatives will look at the systems, processes, um, and the the tools available to the municipality to make building homes uh, faster and easier. Um, Updating our zoning bylaw to make it easier to develop along transit corridors or above uh, commercial buildings, uh, removing the need to go through a lengthy, um, you know, process, a planning process. Or this funding can look like uh, direct incentives. So that would be grants um, or, you know, monies available to folks to actually build homes, whether that's an additional unit in their house, a backyard home, or a brand new uh, housing complex. So it's not just straight math. It's not like it's $20 million over a certain number of units and you get a subsidy for this many, you know, this many dollars per unit. It's It doesn't quite work out that way. No, there's simply not enough money for it to work out that way. So Thunder Bay is just one of, you know, over 60 municipalities that has received this funding. Um, and that means that we have to get creative in how we distribute that money. And we have to think about the whole system. It's not just about the next three years where we, we have these funds available, but it's about the next 10. Uh, How do the things that we do today, next year, the year after, impact housing development down the road? If we can use these funds to make that process easier um, and make it more attractive, then we can ensure that it's not just about, you know, the direct incentives. It's about that lasting change. 
And, and I guess that's uh, part of the challenge here, right? Is that you've got this this pot of money to spend, but you're looking, as you said, not just to build the the uh, most amount of homes that you can build in the next couple of years. It, it's kind of pushing it over the long term. Yes, and that's with the ultimate you know, um, the ultimate objectives in mind. So this fund is very specific. It's targeted at our urban settlement area, which is a pretty big term for basically the boundaries um, that we we look at at in our official plan and, and call urban settlement. Um, so in order to to use these funds, it has to be for housing directed in those areas to support urban density and infill. The idea behind that is that the more people we have using our existing services, so when we talk municipal services, we're talking sewer, water, the more people we have using those, um, the more people um, are there to help maintain those services and ultimately reduce the burden on each individual homeowner. So so the hope is to not create more subdivisions that are kind of on the edge of the city, because that's where we've, we've seen some building traditionally taking place in, in Thunder Bay lately. Yes. So if we look at, you know, if we go back in time throughout history and we look at the post-war boom where we saw the federal government, that was the last time they had this huge injection of money into municipalities. And and the idea of the time was that we'd build these, you know, these subdivisions, we'd, we'd put down these single detached homes, um, they'd follow similar styles, and we'd build out that way. Over time, we've started to see that there, you know, that type of building can cause some problems. Um, in Thunder Bay, we have uh, we have a large um, you know, land mass of services, lots of roads, uh, water lines, sewer lines that we have to to maintain. Um, so now what the focus of this program is to to think about development in a different way. How do we encourage infill? How do we encourage density? How do we look at that missing middle? Not just the single detached homes, but the duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, um, and above, because houses uh, look different um, to everyone, and we need to make sure that it's you know we're we're moving past that idea that a house is just a single detached home. Yeah, and and that's going to be a bit of a challenge because Thunder Bay, you know, when you when you say subdivision to me or housing, I think single detached house, like that's what I live in. And that's that's a common a common thought, and I think. You know, as we as we move forward, this is going to take a whole community effort. Um, it's not just the city. It's not just the people that are building homes, but it's it's all of us. And, uh, you know, when I think about this project, I think about the old adage that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And we have to we have to go far um, in this project because the houses that we build today are still going to be here in 70, 80 years. And we know that Thunder Bay is going to look a lot different. Um, the world's going to look a lot different. And it's time to start thinking about preparing for that future. And, and what about the reaction from developers? I know there was a, an event you know, that the city was involved in with developers last week. What, what are you hearing from them? So we have begun community conversations um, to to start to um, you know think about what are some of the barriers that uh, people face when they're looking at development. Um, so not just you know developers, but also individuals who may be looking to to build a backyard home. And so we've been hearing that you know there's there's some existing processes that make it really challenging um, to to move forward with some types of of housing, um, and then you know. A lot about the the um, availability of services. So where services are located in Thunder Bay? How do you access those services? If you're looking to build a backyard home, um, do you need to have a separate water line, separate sewer line, and how much that costs? So we're doing the groundwork right now and laying the you know the foundation to understand what the barriers are. So as we move forward with designing the uh, incentive program, so those grant programs, um, we're hoping that this will allow us to to address some of those concerns. So a lot more work needs to be done. More conversations need to be had. Um, This is just the the initial step. Lots of questions also about timelines for this. You know, the money's announced. People are excited to see some money starting to flow. What are the timelines to get, I guess, plans in place and, and, and dollars flowing? When we have more information, we will make that available uh, on our website, which is thunderbay.ca 
forward slash HAF. Um, so all of these different incentives do require us to follow um, laws and processes, uh, which will include public meetings uh, that will have invitations uh, for everyone to to participate, um, review the incentives before uh, council makes a final decision. So as we have more information, we will... Um, we will make that available, but the goal is is to get all of these in place by the end of the year um, as soon as possible so that we build momentum um, and get people excited for this building season. And, and I know you weren't at council last night, but there was certainly a lot of chatter, uh, you know, because there were some changes made. Essentially at, at a high level, can you maybe just explain some of the changes that happened last night? So last night, the report uh, that went to council was focused on on delegated authority. Um, so, uh, you know, we have processes in the municipality where council is required to sign off on on some um, on decisions um, and administration is able to sign off on others. So this report was really about looking at how can we make decisions um, move faster and remove some of that upfront um, administrative work. So when we think about a council report, that has about a two-week lead time to you know write the report, get it through the review process, and get it front in front of council. So this report um, allows administration to um, you know dispose of lands of up to two hundred thousand uh, dollars. It also allows administration to purchase lands of up to two hundred thousand dollars without that council approval. So the idea of this report was really to make sure that we have the tools in place um, to make these. Decisions decisions move more quickly. Summer, really appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Summer Stevenson is the project manager of the Housing Accelerator, and she joined me here in the Minutes studio. A big thanks for listening to the Minutes this week. Of course, if you want more information about City Council, agendas, or Minutes, just visit thunderbay.ca slash council. If you want to listen to past episodes or maybe provide some feedback, visit thunderbay.ca slash the Minutes. You can also find the Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. That includes Apple, Google, and Amazon podcasts, along with Spotify, plus our website as well. I'm Jeff Walters. Thanks for listening this week. We'll chat again next week. Make it a great day.